Right, music means it is Free Speech Friday. It's a half hour of a show on a Friday where we wrap up the week with a couple of people who believe in free speech and don't mind exercising it. Don't forget, you're on a radio station that's never had a formal complaint under the Broadcasting Act upheld against it. Absolutely amazing. That's because we're not subject to the Broadcasting Act or to formal complaints. Who is joining us this morning? Well, both fresh from flooding, I imagine. Um, and joining us, I think, on the, on for the first time is former National Party leader, National MP, digital policy spokesperson, I think now, under the Chris Luxon regime, Judith Collins, MP. Welcome to you, Judith. Oh, hi, Sean. Lovely to um, talk to you. Good. We Happy got you. Year and all that. Yep. Got <laughs> you loud and clear. And also yep. joining us from a flood hit Auckland, the man who would have been mayor, who would have been going to feed and service the Drongos had he not pulled out of the race to open another bar. And we might talk a little bit about some issues there as well. He is the publican with the mostest, Leo Malloy. How are you, Leo? Morning, Sean. Morning, Judith. Great to be back on your show. Morning. All right. Now, firstly, uh, let's get the personal stuff out of the way. Were you both dry and safe during well, the absolutely. Wayne Brown climate change-induced... Disaster. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll go first in Leo, because um, I put my, my makeup on already. Um, look, yeah, no problem uh, with us at the moment. Um, in Papakura, my electorate, I've uh, been out there every day and really not um, got damaged, thankfully. Mm. I mean, obviously, there'll be some people who have, but we've also had as an indication to calls to the office in Papakura for help. Um, none, actually, as in the last few days. And that's because it's all been in the west um, and north, and obviously Epson's been pretty badly hit too. Yeah, yeah. Leo, what about you? Are uh, you all safe and well? Yeah, we escaped 99.9% of it, Sean. Yeah. Um, as Judith, Judith alluded to, the west got hit pretty bad. Henderson out through Kumu, because there's issues out there with floodplains and drainage, Kumu River negligence, that sort of thing. Um, but no, we were very fortunate in the central city in the Bardock, so yeah, we're fine. But All right. uh, thought goes out, of course, for those who did get it. Yeah, and, no and, 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 and you know, people died. We've got to remember that. Would Do either of you think it would have made any difference if Wayne Brown had declared a state of emergency a few hours earlier? Well, probably not, but I think it's more to do with the fact that he didn't do it for some time. People thought there's clearly a major problem, particularly in the west and the north, and the issue, I don't think, it would, all the evidence that I've been told is it wouldn't have made a difference to what could happen. But I do think that it, he does need to do something with his um, communication style. And uh, Wayne's a, a great guy to get things done. The problem is he does need to be able to talk to the media even if he doesn't necessarily love them. Why? Why, Judith? Come on, imagine <laughs> in, your, in your greatest yeah. dream you wouldn't have to deal with any of those drongos. Because, jeez, well, they gave you a hard time, didn't they? It certainly did. Um, well, most did, but some were decent and fair. I think the point is is that politics and media have become very, very divisive, mm. and um, and this is one of the problems. And so you've seen the piling in on Wayne Brown. Wayne is, and, and Leo and I both know him, but not probably as well as some people would think, Wayne is not a people person. He is not like Leo, who would be out there talking about it and keeping people buoyed up. Oh, Leo, you but can't is, shut him up, can you? Yeah. yeah no, 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 but, but that's great. That's great at such a time. And, um, but what Wayne is good at doing is getting things done. I first met Wayne when he was chair of the Auckland District Health Board when Helen Clark had appointed him there because he was always put in by Labour to, um, you know, kick some heads in and basically... That's what Auckland has put him in there for to sort out the uh, Auckland Council because it is now a monolith that is um, holding people back. Leo, do you think, and I met him for the first time, was it Wednesday before last, uh, at a function you were hosting, Leo, and he seemed an all right geezer to me for a politician. Uh, he's, he's just like me, but um, as Judith correctly observed, he's not quite as... Um Gregarious. As I am. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's probably his biggest weakness, but I know he's working on it. We've had a few conversations, and he explained to me minute by minute what he did and what he could have done and perhaps where he went wrong. And I'll give you the short version now. He was surrounded by emergency services who told him to wait until they told him to push the button. What he didn't do, and what I would have done, is had half a dozen key media there who, you, who were you know, decent, responsible media, and they could have been part of the whole process. But there's a little gap, about an hour and a half gap, where when he did finally push the button at nine o'clock, 
he didn't make it public till about 10, 20 or something. And that should have been done in a more expeditious fashion and he should have had media there and he should have turned it into yeah. what it was. It was a significant event, but yeah. because it wasn't reported. And sadly, he looked like Judas 100% correct. Wayne's a real good bugger. He's old school. He's getting a job done. He keeps me up to date with what he's doing and what he's focusing on. But comms is not a strong point. And Desley has to step up, and she is stepping up. She's doing a very good job with the media. I don't want her to do too good a job, though, because I want to be the next man. I don't want Desley getting too Oh, God, profile, you still though. have aspirations, Leo. Well, of course, someone's got to fix this city. Wayne's getting it started. I've got to finish the job. Someone's got yeah. to fix it. We're on track, man. We're back on track away from that silly, bloody Labour stuff that's going on for a while. All right. So well, are, are, are we? Bad. Let's look at these poll results come out. A kind of 4% bounce. Someone observed this morning, actually, that when Todd Muller took over from you, Judith... I don't even realise I've got No, no, he this. took over from Bridges. Oh, he Bridges, OK. Bridges. I just always found it yeah, hard. No, no, I had to you know, take over Whose from turn him. was it that week? Um, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> no, I he, 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 Yeah, that's <laughs> right. He had a 9% bump, Todd Muller, before he lost yeah. his mind. So really 4%, the change with Chippy and a really compliant media buying into the Jacinda was burnt out narrative, which we now know to be a complete fallacy. Um, It's not quite the bump that Labor needs to get in a significant way back in this game, is it? No, it's not. In fact, what you're seeing is this is the guy who oversaw the whole MIQ utter disaster. This was the guy who um, had the Charlotte Ballas debacle when this poor pregnant woman couldn't go to Afghanistan but couldn't come to New Zealand. Uh, we had He was also the guy who actually oversaw the health system at, at uh, some of its worst moments. And he was actually that person once here. And the fact that he smiled and waved a bit, you know, you'd think people would get through that one and I think they will. As soon as they realise this is the same guy who actually stuffed up so much when he was a senior minister and the senior team of them, of Jacinda Ardern's uh, government. Yeah, Leo, what do you make of Chippy? Is he the, the saviour, the great ginger hope of the Labour Party? No, absolutely not. So let's give him some credit for a start. He is a heavy lifter by their standards, but he's amongst a whole lot of flakes. They've got no depth. Uh, him and Kerry Allen are the only two with any depth, and they don't get on, I'm told, by inside sources, which is sad because I'm a big Kerry Allen fan too. But his negatives, Judith just traversed them. Uh, he is. He has baggage. He has a lot of baggage over his handling of various matters pertaining to COVID. And uh, whilst he can get a bit of work done, I don't think he's a solution. And that bump was fairly... It's a garden variety bump. That's what you expect when you change leaders. I'd love to see the Torbett Mills polls that warranted just into jumping, and yeah. walking the plank or getting pushed or whatever, because clearly they had major problems with her. Yeah. I mean, she's lived a life for a long time, Jacinda. The myth around her... Uh, the international yeah. lift being generated well, I, by I the think we team. can look uh, at how this rolled out, due to the can't we, and say this was got mm-hmm. nothing to do with her being hounded from office by misogynists or going on holiday and having no gas in the tank. She, Chippy, Grant Robertson knew all about this before the gallery party last year. Um, they had a plan in place to have a bloodless transition of power for, from Jacinda, and it was all poll-driven, Judith. Oh, I think it's pretty clear now that the polls were obviously involved. I'd be very interested to see their focus groups when they mm. started asking them about the favourability of each of those three players. And I think what's happened is that Jacinda Ardern and Robertson are seen as incredibly divisive and um, full of negativity. And what we have with Chippy is that they call him Chippy for the reason he smiles a lot and he's got ginger hair. Um, And nobody quite knew that he was actually the person doing some of the things that they really hated. Yeah, all right. Uh, The other thing that Chippy does have in the sign, Leo, is, well, I don't know, they've found $715 million or more to continue the fuel compensation or or, or the, the tax cut and the half-price public transport, that's pretty compelling for the average voter, isn't it? Well, using your money to buy their way back into power or trying to buy their way back into power won't help them, of course. They are in a death spiral, a significant death spiral, and it's not recoverable. So, But they will continue to use your money to try and buy your favour, mm. which is bizarre, but that's how they think. So, Yeah. What, what do you think of that, Judith? Is that just pump well, priming an election year? Well, they're having to, aren't they, because the cost of living is so high. Um, by the way, you've got to be able to afford the petrol or the diesel in the first yeah, place. Yeah, that's and, right. And that is one of the issues. We certainly haven't seen kids at school um, this last week when they were supposed to be. Oh, by the way, Chippy was also the Minister of Education, by the way. Um, so you've got, you've, you've got a situation where people simply can't pay their bills. 
And if they've got a, a home with a mortgage on it, uh, they are struggling to pay that. So I think that's the point, isn't it? Is they're saying, oh, yes, okay, we'll stand to take less tax off you in fuel taxes. By the way, they haven't been using your taxes, fuel taxes, to fix the roads, is, is pretty clear. What they have been doing is paying for a lot of advertisements telling you that they do things for you. Now, frankly, that whole system of taking money off you needs that money needs to go into roads, not into TV ads, which are quirky and fun and cost a hell of a lot of money. Yeah, all right. Look, one thing Chris Gipkins has done, he's had a cabinet reshuffle, and the one person who lost most out of that was Nanaya Mahuta, no longer the local government minister. Surely, guys... That opens a window of possibility that the very contentious three, we call it five waters here on the platform proposal, will be stopped, will be modified, will be put on the back burner. Surely that's real, genuine change that, that Chris Hipkins represents, Leo. Um, conflict there, though, because there's a contradiction. And I getting demoted, um, you know, Willie getting promoted. Where's this going? When I'm... I'm not against co-governance myself in principle. I don't have a problem. Oh, aren't, aren't you? You should join the Human well, Rights well, Commission, Leo. Well, the Waikato River, you know, there's many rivers. The Whanganui River, our Rangi Mount Crook, there's plenty of good examples of co-governance. Where, but when it erodes or jeopardises the... Well, hang, well, hang on, Leo. What is co-governance, mate? Can you just explain it to me? Well, go and have a look at the Uruweras. It works quite well there. Look at Mount Crook. It works well there. Um, there's examples no, no, I'm here, asking Judith. you what it is, Leo. Because I think it is now just a genuine catch cry for I'm a bit liberal about Maori issues. Oh, no, that, 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 you, no, you're not being completely frank and honest there. I mean, you could, you could take that view, but I've just given you half a dozen examples of co-governance, which works quite well. No, no, but no, you haven't told me what it is that they are, though. Or co-governance. What do you think it means? OK, so that means in governance is in a democracy is by elected representation, right? Well, when I said, I said then, when it jeopardises democracy, that's right. when co-governance okay. is bad. Well, I'd say it always. The problem of three waters, yeah. problem of three waters is it clearly jeopardises democracy. Um, Tamana Ochiwai, as you know, is the overriding legislation, there, and that's the big problem. But three waters is a manifestation of that, and it's, it's clearly, it's a, there's some major fundamental issues, but I wouldn't read too much into the fact that Nanaya Mahuta was demoted. I'd be looking more at why was Willie Jackson promoted. Yeah. Judith, your view on that? Are they prepping ma the Māori kind of electorate and caucus um, for a bit of a defeat? Well, I think that Nanaya's demotion was at the price of Willie Jackson being promoted and um, and also Kerry Allen was promoted. Um, there's Look, this co-governance thing is just has gone way too far and when we're talking about individual um, rivers or individual mountains where there is a long history and under the Treaty of Waitangi, I, get, I absolutely understand the relationship and why we should um, respect that. But also understand this, is that what was one of the problems when Auckland ran out of water a few years back was getting any extra flow from the Waikato River. So, and who was stopping that? That was, your, that was the actual governing body of that river, which is a co-governance body. So you do need to be really careful with this. And where it's gone from is from distinct items or um, treasures like what, you know, Whang, Whang, Whanganui River and turning into some sort of nonsense right throughout the country where you can't actually have uh, a water regulator that doesn't have to have an entire Maori arm, which is chaired by the sister of Nanaya Mahuta, um, which doesn't have to actually really turn a whole lot of New Zealanders off and make us, and many New Zealanders, wonder what the hell have we got there? And what we've got is a government that was intent on reshaping New Zealand into a very divisive society. Yeah. Look, I just read today to a, a listener highlighted this. Ming Foon has come out today. And he is calling, and the Human Rights Commission is calling on the government to commit to constitutional transformation and co-governance. Well, I thought he was quite good when he was Mayor of Gisborne. Yeah. And um, I think that would be good for him now. But I've got to say, Ming Foon is, um, is, is a very pleasant person to meet. And, yep, and, I would agree. Know, we have a hug when we meet each other. But he needs to calm the farm and understand that he is not an elected 
person. The people of New Zealand did not decide on him. He was appointed by the now um, gone Prime Minister and actually New Zealanders have had a guts full of being bossed around by non-elected people who they've got no say over. And the thing is with Wayne Brown and with every other politician, we all get to put ourselves forward again, if we wish to, at the next election for a very public job interview. Yeah. And and these people who are appointed by governments are not. And they need to just remember that the people are always, always paramount. Yeah. Leo, what do you make of, of Meng Foon? Do you think all the woke um, liberals are in a final spasm of wokeism because they see the wind changing? Well, first, as a person, I don't know him, but I do admire you know his multilingual capacity, that sort of thing. There's some good things about, as Judith mentioned, you know, he was very good for Gisborne. Um, whether he's good and whether he's staying in his lane now, I don't know. I don't have strong feelings about it. But, yeah, I mean, as you know, Sean, I, I do worry about the influence of, of woke and the way the media is manipulated of wokeism. So I'm going to say that I'm siding with what Judas said there. OK, all right. Um, look, we had another issue up north, a story you won't have read in any other media, but the platform got into it, the Free Speech Union got into it. A, a public venue in Northland, Sport Northland, refused a group called Stop Co-Governance from having a public meeting or from hiring their public facilities to have a public meeting. We piled on some pressure. The Free Speech Union piled on some pressure. Sport Northland have now capitulated. In fact, they've offered this group the venue for free. But the group's keeping going, saying they want a declaration from the Human Rights Commission that their rights as citizens, their rights to freedom of speech, were threatened and breached by that cancel culture move from Sport Northland. One would have thought, wouldn't one, Judith, that the message has been clearly delivered by the, the courts and the court of public opinion that that sort of uh, wokeism and cancel culture isn't acceptable from public bodies. Well, yes, I think you're either a private body or you're a public body. You're, you're, not, you're not a little bit of both, which is what it sounds as though um, Sport Norton got themselves in a bit of a, a tangle over. Mm. And the fact is that if you are hiring out your facilities as a public body, then... Um, unless it's, it's to an organisation that is undertaking criminal activity um, or is banned by way of because it's a terrorist organisation or something, then basically you don't have the power to, to pick and choose so much. I mean, the thing is, is that I think they just got overcome by it all. And, and I'm pleased to hear, though, that they've come to the right way of thinking on it, which is um, just get on and let people use their facilities. Yeah. Hey, Leo, talking of facilities, I know that you have, and I had a look at it the other week when I was up. It's a very nice refit you've done on sort of HQ2. You've got a few problems, though, with people not seeing things your way. You're, you're going through a bit of a red tape uh, nightmare at the moment. Yes, and I have to choose my words carefully here because I'm subject to a non-disparagement clause. But I can tell you that the law is the law, and they, it was their prerogative to do what they did and they did it and I think it's something that should, probably should be looked at by Curie Allen I think sale and supply of alcohol act comes under Ministry of Justice but, um, and I've had a conversation with Curie about it but yes I think um, that there was a technicality there that probably the law wasn't in, in, certainly in the spirit of the law but technically it was they, they did what, they, what the law allowed them to do which is unfortunate but anyway it's all behind us now we're looking forward because we got open last night we had a lovely night we had a band in you've got the, the licence you're all up and go yeah, we got going last night. We had a fun night. It was fantastic. Had just very impromptu sort of a gathering, about 100, yeah. 150 people. But we're looking mainly for the weather to improve. It's hard to trade in the buy up when you don't have a Yeah, outfit. well, if you get rid of Wayne Brown as mayor, of course the weather's going to improve. And you get rid of dairy, the dairy industry, you're just going to be in complete sunshine. Yeah. Sorry, I went all green on you guys there. Look, the other thing I've been asking people this morning is Waitangi Weekend. A, what are you doing on Waitangi Day, guys? And what does it mean to you, if anything? Judith? Well, I won't be going to Waitangi, um, and I know that the leader, Chris Luxon, and some of the team are going there, but I, I'm i not going. And what I will be doing, uh, well, I will be probably uh, cleaning some house, and I will be working on some more digital stuff that I'm working on at the moment. So that's All right, much All right. and what does it work. mean to you? I mean, is it a great weekend where you feel a sense of national pride and, and co-governance? <laughs> No, I don't feel well. Well, number one, 
Article 1 of the treaty was pretty clear. Sovereignty is, is, um, and governance is given to the Crown. Um, so pretty much that's, you know, on as a, as a nation. Um, I, look, I, I feel that Waitangi has become deeply politicised and that it, the time has probably come for us to uh, get past all of some of the stuff that goes on at Waitangi and hopefully this time it'll be a much happier occasion now that it won't be hopefully as politicised as it was when I was there. All right. Leo, what are you doing? Well, I'm having a quiet weekend here because we are busy. We've got nose to the grindstone. As I said, we just got open last night and there's a lot of work to do. You know, you don't know where your issues are until you open the doors and we've got a lot of issues to address this morning. So I'll be busy. Having said that, I genuflect to our uh, Maori ancestors and our culture and I think it's important that we do acknowledge them and I won't be doing too much. I've been to Waitangi before and thoroughly enjoyed it, but not this year. I'll be working right. at home. Well, I can tell you guys, I finally guilted Winston Peters into guilting Shane Jones and getting me to an invite to the party on Saturday. And having done that yesterday to tee up accommodation and getting up to carry on, carry, carry on Saturday night, but I... I don't know. I'm torn as to whether to go to Waitangi on the Sunday or head back to Wellington and try and get something of a long weekend out of it. I'm going to ask you both for your advice. If I could stay Sunday and wander on to, to Waitangi just in a private capacity, should I do that? As, and I've never been before, I've got to say, as a journalist well, or a private citizen. It's, it's lovely to go, and I think you should go, Sean, uh, as long as you've got the accommodation yep. set up. And, of course, there, there, are, there have been issues with flights and... There is always an issue around accommodation because... Yeah, no, I found an Airbnb last night. I found okay. an Airbnb oh, for great. Saturday night. Right. I, I don't know if I can extend it for Sunday. I imagine I well, can. Well, I, I'm sure Leo would agree. Look, I just think if you haven't done that, then that is something that you should do because, you know, right. personally, off, off the actual official part, it's actually very pleasant. I found the official part a little um, stressful, having mm. to have a man talk for me. Mm. Um, but, you know, part apart from that, there we go. Great guy, <laughs> whoever it was. Uh, who was it that had to speak Shane, to Dr. Shane. Oh, oh, oh Dr. Was Shane. Shane Ritty, yeah. Oh, and okay. he did a brilliant job. And All he right. made the point, and um, it has been taken on board, apparently. Yeah, good so stuff. Good. Hey, look, another yeah. question, Leo. We've been having a lot of fun with the Welsh um, rugby union's ban of Delilah, uh, the Tom okay. Jones well, song. Yeah, I was surprised you didn't tell me this was going to be discussed because this is, you mentioned wokeism before. It's an awful bloody disease, and it's insidious how it's creeping into society. It is a song, when you listen to the lyrics, and I never had before, about a guy stalking his ex and then stabbing her to death, Leo. Yes, I get that, but no one knew the lyrics until these clowns brought it up. People just had it as one of those catchy stadium anthems, we call them in the trade. Yeah. Anthem-style song like Sweet Caroline that everyone sings along to. You don't need to know the lyrics. People mumble and, you know, yeah, bluff yeah. their way through the lyrics. But these clowns have brought it up. I mean, where's it going to stop, though? I mean, I remember three or four years ago, they tried to stop us playing Michael Jackson songs at HQ. I refused to be. But, of course, they were putting complaints online saying that I was somehow validating Michael Jackson's alleged deviance. The guy wasn't convicted that I know of anything. But oh, come on, come on, come on, Leo. We all know the truth. Well, he's, was he convicted, though? You're going to judge him without No, no, no. He was definitely a kitty fiddler, though. Yeah. Mm hmm yeah. Oh, I'm just saying, he wasn't convicted. <laughs> okay. and, so and they, I presume I, can be, I will be able to listen to Delilah at the new HQ? Well, I don't know if it's to be on our playlist, but I can't see right. why. And if not, be, we have got a politically cleansed version, two politically cleansed versions that Ben and I have made. Why, why, bye, 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 Nanaya, which is my version, is the best one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Judith, what do you think about it? I've got to say, I went and read the lyrics... And and there's yeah. and there's why 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 Jacinda, which is Ben's version of it. Um, I did read the lyrics, and they were pretty offensive. Yeah, well, I, like Leo, um, who knew the lyrics? I just remember that that first line. And um, but yeah, I, I think you know we've got to get past going around stalking women and killing them because they don't want you. Yeah. Um, that's that's really you know it's, it is better if they move to something else. I think, and it's not it's not that it's Tom Jones. It's not that it's just. Actually, guys, you know, we've all moved on, haven't we? All right. I thank you for the yep. female perspective, Judith. I thank you both for joining me this morning. That was a good yarn, good crack. I hope you both have a lovely long weekend, whatever you choose to do with it, and we'll have you back on um, Free Speech Friday soon. Ka kite no. Cheers. Uh, Leo Malloy, Judith Collins, um, our Free Speech Friday's panel. All right, yeah, Leo's had a bit of a battle, bit of a battle getting the new uh, bar up and running, but they're open running now. And yes, 
I did get the official invite uh, from Shane Jones. Uh, okay, I'm off to what? Well, and should I stay on on Sunday? Look, it's just logistically difficult, but I am working on it.